Oh boy, it's been a busy week for the White House, hasn't it? With infighting, controversial moves, and Sean Spicer resigning. His replacement is Sarah Huckabee, and this was partly to do with Anthony Scaramucci being hired as the new communications director for the White House. I think there's a moral to this story, and there's a valuable lesson we can actually learn from this, and that's to try and have a coherent message on all fronts when you are in a position of scrutiny, such as the White House. Because Sean, I feel sorry for. You've got Trump who mouths off on Twitter, and then the administration has to pick up the pieces, and then there's never a real coherent message, because we've had instances in the past where Trump has said something, the administration has gone, aha, this is what he meant, and then he's tweeted something honestly to the complete opposite of that sort of thing. And we have Sean Spicer who seems like he tries to wing it in these situations as opposed to consulting with the White House later and saying we'll release an official statement on this. You can see examples with this such as the Pissgate story where his initial response was I don't even think Trump wears a bathrobe, instead of just stopping at the part where he says there were inconsistencies in that story. He also did this with Kofefe, where his defense of the matter was. Uh, the president and a small group of people know exactly what he meant. Blake. <laughs> and his winging it tends to get him into situations where he makes stupid blunders, such as saying that someone is despicable as Hitler, who didn't even sink to the to the to using chemical weapons. And then going with the Obama lawn thing, where there was, you know, him having to defend the statement that Trump had a bigger inauguration crowd than Obama, which was kind of unnecessary. I don't know why anybody really gave a shit. And the list goes on and on. And the way that Sean Spicer's handled this kind of reminds me of Sam Hyde's parodying shift. It's entertaining, it's funny, but it's inconsistent, clearly improvised, and kind of worrying that somebody was given that microphone at that level of prestige in the first place. Guys. What's the one problem right now that's not going to be around in 2070? <laughs> the elderly and the disabled. Because we're just going to kill them! He looks wrecked, but dude, some of the things you came out with, you just didn't need to. And it's the thing where he tries to wing it for the administration and try and lie and make up things to a room of investigative journalists who are just going to fact check this later and find it out to be false. Honesty is the best policy and this is another thing we can actually learn from this where you're honestly just better off telling the truth or just saying give us a bit and we'll come up with an official statement on the matter. Take a step back, think about what you're going to say and then do it. Think before you post. And this is kind of why I feel sorry for Sean but at the same time I think he was an idiot with his job. The Cough FA tweet and even the Melania Trump plagiarizing Michelle Obama's speech, they could all be examples of Trump's game of 4D chess, where in Trump's book, The Art of the Deal, at page 176, he says this, in reference to having to knock down a few art sculptures to build Trump Tower. I learned a lesson from that experience. Good publicity is preferable to bad. But from a bottom line perspective, bad publicity is sometimes better than no publicity at all. Controversy, in short, sells. And this is the thing, you can actually stretch what Trump did to fit this definition, which the Kofefe tweet wound up with him in the news over people trying to guess what he actually was trying to put in that tweet, which has people trying to think about the message that the president was going to send out on a bottom line level. And with the Melania Trump thing where she's copied Michelle Obama, you have news outlets analysing the speech. And while they're saying that she plagiarised maybe like a couple of paragraphs of Melania Trump's thing in this 20-minute speech. The news outlets then summarise what the whole speech was about while stating which bits were plagiarised, so people are exposed to the message of the speech. And I feel really sorry for Sean if Trump is doing these 4D chess manoeuvres because he then has to make up something to the press about how these were intentional or they didn't happen. In all honesty, this probably isn't 4D chess from Trump, but it's interesting to look at previous things he said and analyse them from this. It's mainly places like 4chan, Poll, and R the Donald from Reddit that do point this out. And I bought the book because I'm kind of curious about the 10-step plan more than anything. As a businessman, any knowledge that will help me it further my business is useful, but that's a tangent. Might do a book review later because I think it'd be good to compare the art of the deal to the rules of power. Anyway, back on topic. And before people bring up Clinton, my opinion on whether she would have been better on Twitter or not is that it would have been more managed, it would have been more coherent, but it would have been just as cringy as the happy birthday, this future president thing. And oh god, don't even get me started on that. Tweets like that and articles like this where they say that Clinton had a 99% chance of winning made people complacent and then with the DNC voter fraud and stuff like that. This contributed to Trump winning the Electoral College because 
people just didn't bother to try and appeal to rural America, the areas that needed some attention, and do sway the Electoral College, which is kind of why he got voted in. That's a different thing. If I'd have had a choice between Clinton and Trump, I'd have jumped off a bridge. On my way down, I'd have probably also asked, like, how do we get to a point where we have two completely terrible choices nearly every election? And I could say the same for the UK, really, except we have more than a two-party system, so I do have other options to vote for, and it's usually Lib Dem, because they seem to be the least worst option for me, personally. But, you know, in the UK, you've got Labour, which is economically unstable, or you've got the Conservatives, which is crony capitalism. It's just, mm. And the other question is, how do we get to the point where a man for his job has to defend the president's spelling mistakes on Twitter and unfounded stories about him being peed on in a hotel room in Russia? Honestly, a lot of it has to do with partisan journalism. Moral of the story here, and this is something we can take into our own lives, have a coherent and consistent message, think before you post, always tell the truth. Controversy, in short, sells. And subscribe to Fridgeworks. Do 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 do